While many personal care manufacturers are familiar with automating their clean in place or CIP practices, there are still many facilities who, whose clean out of place or COP practices are manual. In this video series, we will take a look at the journey from manual to automated COP and how manufacturers are benefiting from this transformation, both within their cleaning processes as well as in their production processes. Welcome to our video series, The Journey from Manual to Automated Clean Out of Place. I have with me Pete Berry, Product Management Director for Sanomatic, and Susan Youngquist, Global Technical Consultant and Validation Manager for Ecolab. In this video, we'll focus on the challenges of manual cleaning in personal care facilities. First question is to you, Susan. What do current manual COP processes look like in a facility? So across the personal care industry, we see a lot of different COP processes. Um, COP, of course, is clean out of place. And that process itself is going to vary based on the soil type that's being cleaned. Whether you're cleaning, say, a waterproof mascara or a zinc-loaded sunscreen or maybe something very heavy in pigments. What we see quite often is the operators clean and clean repeated number of times, clean until clean, to get the soil removed. And quite often, we come across pieces of equipment that are not designed for CIP or clean in place. So then they're disassembled and taken into a washing room, and they get cleaned over and over. Parts of that equipment brought into the washroom might be scrubbed or soaked and then allowed to dry before they're reassembled. Typically, manufacturers spend a lot of time optimizing their CIP operation. And that's a good thing to do, but they often forget about optimizing COP. And then that clean out of place operation becomes a bottleneck where the CIP is completed, but they're waiting for the COP parts to be ready to go back into production. So there's definitely a need to transform manual cleaning to achieve more production time for the manufacturer. COP cleaning, okay. So I think of a traditional COP parts washer. Pete, is that the best automated cleaning technology? Sure. Well, uh, a COP is a step in the right direction, but there is better technology out there today. Um, I like to make the analogy of washing dishes at home. So we all have done that. And uh, say you have a really baked on pot or a pan. Um, manual cleaning, you know, you're taking out the scrub brush and you're, and you're trying to scrape off that product. Um, that's analogous to the, the manual cleaning in, in the facilities that Susan just mentioned. Uh, COP parts washer, you know, say now you fill up your sink, one side of your sink, you plug it, you add your dish detergent, you add your hot water, and you let it sit for a while, right? So it's going to take off some of those soils, and it's really going to help start to get, you know, some of those tough soils off. So that's that's analogous to a COP parts washer. So again, it, it makes the manual process a little bit uh, more automated, a little bit easier, but still not a, a very reliable, very repeatable, very easy uh, solution. So now we get into what we call cabinet or parts washers uh, in our industry, and those are analogous to uh, a dishwasher, right? So we load up your parts or your dishes at home, and you hit start, you walk away, and you know a little bit of time later, you come back, your parts are cleaned, and your parts are dried, right? So that's where we want to go to in this automated uh, cleaning process. The COP parts washer still has a lot of touch points. There's still some manual intervention. You're, you're usually pregrancing a lot. Uh, you're taking the parts in and out of the COP parts washer, uh, and then you're taking them out for a final rinse and maybe a sanitized step. So it's a big help, and it makes the processes a lot better than complete manual cleaning. Uh, but to really get that full automation, cabinet washers are the way to go. Really great introductory information. What would you both say are the primary users, primary reasons end users want to switch away from manual cleaning? Susan? Yeah, probably the primary driver is safety. When you think about the operators doing that manual cleaning day in and day out, they get repeated exposure to the chemistry of the cleaners that they're using. And sometimes that chemistry can be pretty aggressive when we're trying to get at some of those tough soils. And we talked a bit about this scrubbing that they're doing to remove the soil. And so we do see repetitive motion injuries occur. The second reason would be a capacity increase. So if a manufacturer is able to reduce that cleaning turnaround time, and open up capacity, it gets them back into production more quickly. Pete? 
Yeah, those are great points. And we also see a reduction in utility costs and labor costs when we're switching from the manual cleaning process to COP and then to cabinet washers. So uh, when we go into a cabinet washer type solution, uh, we're contained and we use a lot less water and chemicals, a lot less heat uh, versus a lot of manual rinsing and foam guns and things like that. You're, you're, there's a lot of uh, high utility and water costs and then drain costs as well with that. Uh, labor costs are, are often also reduced too. So instead of having a full team uh, through an eight hour overnight shift of cleaning parts, scrubbing it down, uh, taking parts manually, handling it, uh, we just have an operator to load up those racks that go into our cabinet washers, hit start, and then they're going to, to do some other uh, type of cleaning or operation type activity. So they come back, their parts are washed, their parts can be uh, dried as well, automated. Uh, so that's that's a great reduction in labor costs that we see. Uh, and finally, manual cleaning, just not repeatable uh, and not recordable. So we all, you know, we're tired sometimes and we're not scrubbing as hard as we should be, or, you know, we miss a spot within the parts. These are complex, you know, geometry parts and there's crevices and nooks and crannies, and it's hard to get at all these parts uh, consistently. Um, so even if you do it right once, it's hard to do it over and over across people, across shifts, across plants. So uh, again, the cabinet washer just hit start and you know, things happen uh, the same over and over. Uh, it's also recordable, so you can record temperatures and conductivity, uh, chemical concentrations, and things like that, critical parameters for cleaning. Excellent. Really great information. And there seems to be a lot of challenges and many opportunities that are in these facilities in regards to manual cleaning. Thanks, Susan and Pete. And please join us for the next episode when we'll dive into more of the benefits of an automated cabinet washer. 